Bibles with you this morning. Look with me to Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs chapter 18. We'll be looking at verse number 24. This is a verse that uh, we've uh, preached on uh, back in 2019, but uh, I had something else uh, to preach this morning, and uh, when I got up, I think I got up uh, at regular time, the old time. And uh, then time got away from me, and I, t I was telling Mark this morning that uh, I had to eat my snack that I usually eat before I leave the house. I had to leave, eat it on the way over. So anyway, uh, I, I don't reckon I met myself anywhere along the way, but uh, time does have me a little bit messed up. Uh, used to be over at my granddaddy's house, uh, and he would turn in, turn on, uh, I think it was AM station in Athens, Alabama, and every morning, Monday through Friday, it would be like this, listen, listen, because he was wanting to hear who was at the, in the hospital, who was in the nursing home. Uh, don't know if they still have that or not. I read up on that uh, not long ago about how long that program the sick, called The Sick Call has been on. Uh, but leading in The Sick Call was a feller by the name of Jimmy Davis, Governor Jimmy Davis, former governor of the state of Louisiana, who wrote this song and, and every day, Monday through Friday. This is how it started off. When the world seems cold and your friends seem few, there's someone who cares for you. When you have tears in your eyes, your heart bleeds inside, there's someone who cares for you. When your disappointments come and you feel so blue, there's someone who cares for you. When you need a friend, a friend till the end, there's someone who's a friend to you. Someone to care, someone to share. All your troubles like no other can do. He'll come down from the sky, brush the tears from your eyes. You're his child and he cares for you. Uh, if you look with me in Proverbs 18 verse 24, King James Version says this, A man that hath friends must show himself friendly, and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. A man that hath friends must show himself friendly, and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Other translations uh read differently. English Standard Version says, a man of many companions may come to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than the brother. New American Standard Version says, a man of too many friends comes to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than the brother. The Amplified Version, the man of many friends a friend of, in, in uh, brackets, they got a friend of all the world will prove himself a bad friend. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. So we want to look at this verse this morning again and uh, see what the Lord has to say to us this morning. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, uh, I thank you, Lord, today. Once again, for you allowing us to be gathered in your house. Thank you for the, the country that we live in. I ask you to send revival to our land. I ask you to be with the folks over in Israel. I ask you to be the folks with the folks in the Ukraine. Lord, uh, send revival not only in this land, but across the world. 
I want to lift up Mr. Putin to you this morning, that you'd change his heart, give him a new heart. Lord, I ask you this morning to save the lost. Be with us, your children. Draw us closer to you. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So Proverbs 18, verse 24, uh, depending on what version of the Bible you're looking at. But uh, let, let's consider this first phrase for just a minute. King James Version says, A man that hath friends must show himself friendly. I want to ask you this. How many true friends do we have? Bobby Walton uh, gave us a definition. He gave us several definitions, but one definition that sticks out in my mind, uh, got, he gave us a definition for forgiveness that I've shared with you. Uh, his definition of, of a friend, of, of being successful is this. If you go through life and you make one true friend, not talking about just an acquaintance, I'm talking about a true friend. Brother Bobby Walton says, then you've been a success. If you've made one true friend, you've been a success. One group of writers says this, there are different levels of friendship. The proverb distinguishes between friends here in uh, verse eight, chapter 18, verse, in proverb, verse 24. Uh, Friends who are casual acquaintances. I believe the Hebrew word for that is R-E-A. These are people who, such as people that we work with, neighbors, friends we know, uh, people we know. So that's one and the other, a friend who truly loves and is committed to you regardless of the circumstances. Oh, you, you down on your luck. Uh, come back when, come back to call me sometime when you get to feeling better, when things are going better for you. They ain't a friend. That ain't a friend. I like the fact that Jesus tells us, if you'll look over there with me, to Matthew chapter 28, verse number 20, uh, last part uh, of the verse, we'll read the whole thing, but the last part of the verse is one I, where I was wanting to go uh, this morning. First part of the verse says this, teaching them to observe. Of course, that's part of the Great Commission that we, we read about. I guess last week, week before, recently, what's teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, behold, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. Even until the end of the world. Now, we could go around the room this morning. We're not going to, but we could have a testimony about how folks has let us down in this life. And then we'd want to go back around the room, though, and, te and tell this. Has, here's the question. Has Jesus ever let you down? Now, Lynn Anderson was the one that sang, uh, I beg your pardon, I never promised you a rose garden. Because you know, it, with most roses, the beautiful, beautiful roses, what comes with them? Some thorns too. Man uh, had this neighbor of mine, it wasn't a rose bush, but he came by and he said, Marty, I've got some Bradford pears. Would you like to set some out around your place there? I said, well, sure. That's free. Uh, wish they'd never done that. Man, them things are not nice, 
Beautiful. But uh had trouble with one and it uh Steve Campbell's told me the reason why a volunteer Bradford pear comes with thorns. I found out that the hard way. I said, man, I'm I'm gonna get these limbs up and uh had a thorn about that long. And uh they don't feel too good. It also don't feel too good when folks let you down. I want to ask you this. Are you a friend to somebody? When we talk about uh, a man that has friends must prove himself friendly. Well, you got folks in your life that are friendly and you're a friend to them. I beg of you, do all that what's in your power not to let that friend down. Not to let that friend down. Uh, as we're going through the, the book of Acts on Wednesday night, we we went over this again in Acts chapter 11, where it says that uh, Barnabas went and uh, saw what was going on. He went back and got Paul and brought him there. And they began to teach and preach. And they was called Christians first. At Antioch, Jesus will never leave us. He'll never forsake us. And we should be a friend to others like he is to us. Proverbs 16, 24, if you'll turn back there with me. Mine's just a page. I know... Sometimes we make a point to read Proverbs 16.25 along with Proverbs 14.12. But today I want you to look with me to uh, Proverbs 16.24. So you got your casual acquaintances. You've got your good friends. Uh, one group of writers says this. Life is filled with hundreds of casual companions. True friends come along all too rarely in life. Because they are so rare, we should treasure them as precious gifts from God. Now, Proverbs 16, 24. Pleasant words are as in honeycomb. Sweet to the soul and health to the bones. Those of us who are children of God knows this, that we have no other friend like Jesus Christ. He's never going to leave us, never going to forsake us. If anybody is running us down, it ain't going to be our friend Jesus. It ain't going to be him. But you know what he'll do? Through the presence of the Holy Spirit, he'll let us know when we're wrong. What will a companion do? What will a, an acquaintance do? Well, this day and time, you're liable to read about yourself on Facebook. You're liable to hear about yourself here, there, and yonder. When things ain't going good, where are they going to be? Where's Jesus still at? Jesus is still right there with us. Turn over to John 15, verse number 13. John 15 and verse number 13. While we're there, we'll get verse 14 as well. John chapter 15, verse 13 says this, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. I've been sharing this with uh, the kids at school, and I can't remember. Amy will have to tell me 
Later on today, what show, if she remembers, what show we was watching. Uh, we were watching a TV show one night together a few weeks ago, and uh, this guy, he was just crying. He, he, he told his girlfriend, said, I, 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 I'm sorry that I did you the way I've done you, but I, I, I'm going to stay with you the rest of our days. I'm here. I'm here with you. I'm never going to forsake you again. And then he looked up over her top of her head, and there come some aliens, what he thought was aliens, walking toward them. And he jumped on his four-wheeler and took off. Left her. That's what an acquaintance will do. That's what a companion would do. So she ran after him. And I reckon he must have been looking behind him because he didn't see the barbed wire fence in front of him. He got all tangled up in that barbed wire and his four-wheeler went off, did whatever it did, probably flipped over, whatever. And he's dangling there in midair with his barbed wire all wrapped around him. And she called the ambulance and went to the hospital with him. And he came to himself and said, do you forgive me? No, but I'm not going to let you go to the hospital by yourself. Jesus said, never leave us. He'll never forsake us. He'll be with us to the end. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. He gave his life for us. Died on the cruel cross at Calvary. God made him to be sin for us. Verse 14. Yeah. He's a friend to us. Are we a friend to him? John 15, verse 14 says, Ye are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. J. Vernon McGee just lays it out there pretty plain. He was a plain spoken feller. He just lays it right out there. If you, if we are not obeying him, He says, if you're not obeying him, I take it that you're not one of his friends. James puts it this way. If a man knows to do good and don't do it, it's sin. If a man knows to do good and doeth it not to him, it is sin. What's the Lord leading me to do? If the Lord's leading me to do something, I think that would be one of the definitions we could make of what's good in life. Am I doing it? If I don't, it's sin. What's the Lord leading you to do? Who's he leading you to speak with? Who's he leading you to witness to? We can do like Peter all day long. Oh, not, not me, Lord. Not so, Lord. But yet the God keep, keeps coming back to us, reminding us of what he wants us to do. So many times we're like old Jonah. We run in the other way. You see, Jesus is a friend that sticks close, is that friend that sticks closer to the brother. He's our Savior. He loved us enough to die for us. Now, we read over there in Matthew 28, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. Turn over with me to Hebrews 13, verse number 5. And if you haven't got this marked, uh, i got a pen here if you need it. Hebrews 13, verse 5.
Verse 5, it says, uh, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have, for he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. A man of uh, that hath friends must show himself to be friendly. You look at a different translation of the Bible, it says that uh, if you've got so many companions, too many friends, you'll come to ruin. But whichever Bible translation you look at, it says this, but there's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Look over with me to Matthew chapter 6, verse number 24. So if we are to cultivate friends, if we are to wanting to make friends, uh, make sure it's the right kind of friends, because Darth Mosley, chapter 1, verse 1, as I've grown up, said this. Whoever you hang around is who you're going to be like. And I thought, ah, mama, mama. And mama proved to be right. Matthew 6, verse 24. No man can serve two masters. We cannot serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Part of my education career was spent dealing with this. <laughs> she, she don't like me. Stay away from her. Next day, they was walking side by side. Sometimes I'd call them, I had a little extra time, I'd call them over, what, what happened? We're friends again. Two, three days later, <laughs> She don't like me no more. Wait a few days. I finally got to where I'd say, wait a few days. She'll like you again. <laughs> they, they won't play with me. Find somebody else to play with. You say, well, that's pretty harsh. Yeah, but there's a friend that sticks closer to the us than a brother. Brothers might, sisters might, relatives might go against us. But let me borrow a line from Jerry Clower. Jesus is always for us. He'll never leave us, never forsake us. Matthew 6, 24, finishing up. So, you can't serve two masters. You're going to love one, hate the other. And that might change. Like kids growing up, that might change from day to day, minute to minute, hour to hour. But you see, the last phrase, you cannot serve God and mammon. You can't serve God and the things of this world. And uh, I wrote down here, definition of mammon, Riches, money, possessions. You say, what's wrong with that? When they're between us and God, a lot is. David told me one day about witnessing to a fella 
that's from another country, then it's paper mill. Do you know God? Was the question. And the man's response was, yes, I've got God at home, sitting on the mantle, little statue. And a lot of times that's what we got pictured as, is what an idol is, but an idol ain't necessarily a statue. One of the times I went to the training for the seven habits of highly successful people. First time I went, they gave me a rock, and it's, it's at home somewhere. I could probably dig it out if y'all want to see it. And they told me to keep it in my pocket. And as y'all can see that are here, it ain't there. I do have a lot of keys, though, if anybody needs them. You say, why ain't there? Because I've got a friend that sticks closer to the the, to me than a brother and he is the rock of my salvation i don't have to tote around a rock in my pocket second time i went they gave us this little statue right here about that high and they said as part of the training seek first to understand, then to be understood. Now, there ain't nothing wrong with that right there, but then they handed me that little statue, and they said, whoever's holding the statue talks. It's still in the box. If you want to come over and look at it, I'd have to dig through some boxes, but it's still in the box it came in because I never took it out. Took it out and looked at it, put it back in the box, it's never been out on display, never been there for anybody to see. Why? Because I serve a risen Savior. I don't need no little statue to remind me about anything. But I need Him. I need His wisdom. I need His power in my life. As the Kingsman sang several years ago, he's all I need. I dare not turn to any other, for he's a friend, a friend that's closer than any brother. He's a friend. Matthew Henry says, in our troubles... We expect comfort and relief from our relations. But sometimes there's a friend that is nothing akin to us, the, the bonds of whose esteem and love prove stronger than those of nature. And when it comes to the trial, we'll do more for us than a brother will. Christ is a friend. To all believers that sticks closer than a brother. To him, therefore, let us show ourselves friendly. Uh, we, we worried about that one down yonder. We worried about that one over there. Well, what about our friendship with Jesus? If you want to get your hymn book out, if you got one there close by, Feller by the name of Joseph Scriven, with some musical help, I think, from Charles Converse, wrote these words, hymn number 259. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. You think about that. Do you remember your best friend in first grade? How they do it? How's your Savior doing? Mine's seated at the right hand of his of my heavenly Father, making intercession for me. 
What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. A man that hath friends, must prove himself to be friendly. And there is a friend. And that friend's name is Jesus that sticks closer than a brother. Now, I ain't telling you to go out and make enemies. I ain't telling you to go out and hurt anybody's feelings. I'm asking you to consider this this morning. What about your friendship with Jesus? What about your friendship with him? Oh, I want you to be a true friend to those around you. Watch out for them, care for them, love them. Tell them about Jesus. What about your friendship with Jesus? He said he'd never leave us, never forsake us. Let's do the same thing for him. He loved us enough to give us, shed his blood that through the shedding of that blood, we might have remission of sins. Don't forget about your friendship with Jesus. Love on him. Love on others, but love on him first. Seek to improve your friendship with him first and foremost of all. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for your many blessings. Thank you so much for loving us enough to die on the cross for our sins. And Lord, uh, as we seek to serve you, Lord, help us to be about your business. Help us, equip us to be a better servant. Work on our heart as only you can. And Lord, if there's any listening to me today that are lost, save them before it's everlasting too late. We thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.